everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is Hashtag No Limits, and I am your host, Shelly Kino. Today, joining me, I am very excited. Um, I have met them through this exact platform. This is the only way. Um, a mutual friend of ours introduced us, and I think they are going to be great people to really exemplify Hashtag No Limits. And Hashtag No Limits is about people who society has placed limits upon, but who have busted through those limits. Ophelia says in Hamlet that we know who we are, but not who we will be. And I 100% agree with that. And I think that there is no better example of that than the caterpillar turning into the butterfly. The caterpillar literally dissolves into just cells and then reforms itself into the butterfly, then it has to struggle to get out of the cocoon in order for its wings to be strong enough to fly. And when you live in a world where limits are constantly being placed upon you, you face a similar struggle in that in order to become the most beautiful butterfly that you can be, you have to fight and you have to struggle and that just makes you stronger. And today's guests, are Gina and, well, this is Emily, but Allie is um, Gina's daughter. And Allie might be joining us in a little bit. We'll see how she feels. And um, so <laughs> Gina and Emily, welcome. And thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you. So Gina, tell us about Allie. So Allie is a 23-year-old um, girl on fire. <laughs> she is she is um, basically falls perfectly under your hashtag no limits. Um, she even though she has grown up with many limits, um, mm -hmm. she's probably broken through beyond our expectations, whatever limits were kind of, um, let's say cast upon her um, from many doctors and many behavioralists and, um, many IEPs that were written and PPT meetings. So, um, she's definitely a spark plug in this world. Um, we're so lucky to really get to share her now as an adult living with autism in the world and especially in our world we're living in today. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So tell us like, um, you know, oftentimes I hear the stories of when someone gets the diagnosis of autism, like maybe their child was developing typically, and then they started to show signs of losing some of those skills. Um, and that's, you know, happens at, at varying different ages. What is, how did you find out that Allie has autism? Allie, um, was, typically growing, um, reaching her milestones, you know, one month, two months, three months. And I would say about three months, I noticed something that was very unusual. And it was um, the way she would look at me and make eye, eye contact with me. She would have this gaze aversion, which I now know what, it, what it's called. Back then, I had no idea, but my hair was um, up a lot in a barrette. And so mm -hmm. she would always be seeming to gaze at my barrette versus my eyes. And as a young mom, I, I picked up on it and nobody else really would pick up on it. But as I stared into her eyes all the time, I noticed that. And so that was a little different for me because I would start to just think to myself, she's always staring at my barrette, but then I would just dismiss it. And I was no worries. And then right. over time, she would just continue to reach each milestone. In fact, she reached some milestones quicker than others. Um, and we just advanced and went forward, um, forming our family. She was our first child. And we went through the summer because Allie was born in November. And then it came to the point where nonverbal cues um, and different things that you're supposed to reach for milestones, that checkup where you do pointing and wave bye bye, and um, kind of reach for the mom, reach for your mom from the uh -huh. saucer type things, and those things weren't happening, and so okay. I found that to be very interesting. But then again, dismissed um, from my pediatricians, um, the people who gather around me, um, 
I mean, my, I have to say my parents, my, both my mom and dad thought it, it was going, it was a little different than what they were used to seeing, mm-hmm. but they were also like, late bloomer or maybe she's just gonna some kids just skip all of that you know everybody had something to say in a positive way just you know kind of waiting for Allie to bloom and then by her first birthday she walked and said her first couple what her first word was book (laughs) now now just coming you know just thinking of that now her first word was book her second word was Elmo and those were her her first two words and then her last two words um un- until many many year many years later um wow. she did receive the mmr um vaccine at her first birthday right after but we, we did notice at many of the um the things that were going on with her before the vaccine so i do feel that she was born with autism. Now that mm-hmm. I look back, it wasn't something that was um, happened because of the vaccine, because we weren't getting the verbal cues. She wasn't answering to her name. She wasn't pointing, you know, she wasn't do- reaching for me, looking for me. And I know right. this so well, because once I had my son, he was holding, like he would hold on to my leg. <laughs> you know, I'd be walking around the house with my son, you know, on my leg and he was waving bye-bye and all the babbling that happened. And so kind of all the stuff I missed, I didn't, John and I really didn't see it that well until we really saw it for ourselves with our own family, which, you know, we tend to do because we have to really live some things to go to understand them and see them. So um, we knew quite early, I would say that she was, Autistic, and I knew, I knew, and then it was really, basically, up to me to be the messenger to talk with John about it and talk with my parents about it. And you said that she's twenty three, right? Yes. So when you were going through this, she was. I mean, obviously, this was twenty three years ago, between twenty twenty three years ago, and Mm -hmm. at that time, a lot of information about autism was just kind of emerging. I mean, now mm-hmm. it's everywhere. Um, it was one that's... in 200, I believe, which was the, um, it was, you know, the what to expect while you're expecting uh-huh. it had like, like a teeny little paragraph in the back. And I remember pretty much that was the Bible back then. And I remember looking in the back of that and seeing it and then almost in myself, I don't even know how I looked it up back then, but looking up autism, I must have looked in some books. Of, we were just catching on to the um, internet back then, right? So um, it was it was certainly a time where you had to, you know, go research, really go out and look for the stuff. Right. Uh, yeah. And I'm thinking about, like you said, your pediatrician and your family members. Mm-hmm. You know, they it, that whole, like you said, everybody had a positive reason why she might be showing some of those symptoms or signs or characteristics, whatever is the word you want to use. um, If that, you know, not looking you in the eye, the gaze aversion that you talked about, or the, you know, not, not necessarily doing certain things at the time that other people might do them. Um, And it's, it's interesting too, to me that you brought up the vaccine. Um, I've often thought about and wondered if not that the vaccine because I think this is kind of what you were hinting at, not that the vaccine causes autism, but maybe that there's, there is some something in the child's body, and then it has a reaction with Mm -hmm. the vaccine that brings about more symptoms. I think it definitely, yeah, it it certainly can push things into gear. Um, And certainly, perhaps where you're weak, you know, Uh so expressive communication, was definitely for Allie, um, expressive, you know, communication was her biggest delay, but also to really get um, close and just follow inanimate objects instead of people. So she would just want these glasses that rather than want me, you just, the object and 
knowing so much about what I know about autism now, you know, the object doesn't change. The object stays the same. The object does not have facial expressions, which she has to interpret emotions, right. signals, raises their voice their vocal um, sounds change and right. all of that is this sensory processing that you know we all do every day as you and I you know and Emily are doing right now we're processing Allie comes in she's got to look at herself she's got to process herself she, you know we can you know we're all new at the world of virtual you know speaking with zoom and stuff mm -hmm. and, and 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 following those signals but as as typical quote unquote typical um developing right. people we are able to pro sensory processing so i think for ali it was really sensory processing disorder of just anything that came into play would shut her down and shut her down and then you know the safety was in the, right. the objects and so and the sameness, the sameness over and over and over. And that became her safe place to um, to be. In fact, when she was young, she had a bucket of books. At my baby shower, we had the, you know, give a book mm -hmm. for Allie's library. And she got all these books. And so by the time when she was able to turn board books, she um, would, we had a big basket of books. She would op take the books out one at a time, turn the page of every book and then flip it over and d read it upside down, you know, look oh. at it upside down. <laughs> yeah. And then she would finish that book and then she would go through the whole pile of books. Wow. Like a good, I mean, it would take a good hour to do right. in this basket, huge basket of books. And we would, you know, we would kind of remark, wow, she just plays so nice by herself. You know, I mean, like, <laughs> like, it's just so funny when you think back and you're just like, oh, you know, I'm getting so much done. And, you know, right. <laughs> how come I'm getting so much done? It's like she's kid plays by herself. She doesn't answer her, you know, her name. You know, she likes the same things over and over again. And then when we started with solid foods, we realized the sensory processing is you know, with the um, oatmeals and the different right. textures, baby food. And then uh, we were so excited to give her like, you know, peanut butter and jelly, you know, and little, yeah. little things like when she could finally have peanut butter. And then it was like, oh, I'm not having any. She, Allie has to have the toast separate, the peanut butter separate, you know, everything's got to be separate. So eating was everything became everything came into play every every, every aspect, aspect of life. yeah came into play what did you say emily i'm sorry i said every aspect of life i mean like oh. you, you think like as like a, a person without autism like people just take that those things for granted i mean like when i go to get her lunch it's like all right well i need to get something that's deconstructed or like something that i know she's going to eat so it's like but we go to the grocery store and we're like oh we're going to get this and whatever and it's every aspect of her life. Yeah. And it's every minute of every day. And I, I do want to say hi. We have uh, Fran has joined us. So I wanted to say hi. She said hi. So I wanted to make sure to welcome her. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it that is such a, a, an amazing statement, Emily, because I think sometimes those of us without autism or without some sort of difference forget that it truly is every minute every second of their day, of their life, that they are, I, I don't, I don't even know that they're, I hate to say the word dealing, but that they are living, I guess, living with this, you know. Well, you're a hundred percent. What I like to talk about, you know, and I've, I've started writing about, we put on our Instagram, you know, the living, living, and it is on our website as well, but, you know, the living with the autism, because we're live 20, we're, we're just live all the time yeah and, and and you know we can be you know Emily's finding this out you know and she has in the past year working with Allie but we you you're live in the grocery store and you're not only live with yourself but you're live with a society around you casting shadows casting shade whatever you want to call <laughs> it days, casting um opinions about you know what you should be doing um, how you should be doing it. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, 
it, it is it, it's a it's it's heavy on the um it's an elevated level of living um with your with the way you think and act and speak and do yeah and uh fran says yes it's not like you cannot address it you it's it's always there and it's always something that you as a mom and you emily as her life coach are always aware of and um me when i was a special education teacher I came home exhausted so often because I just was always feeling like I had to be thinking three or four possible scenarios ahead of what was going on with all of my different students so that, you know, if this one suddenly did whatever, or, you know, this one suddenly did whatever, that I was prepared to handle it so that I wasn't reacting, I was responding. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, we have a pretty good story to tell. I, do you want to tell it with the, um, we worked, we, we work with a behavioralist who is instrumental in, in life skills and, and all the behavior work we're doing out in the world, adulting with Allie. And, um, we have, when we have instances of when she's having these acting up issues and what you do when you're like at target where you abandon the cart mm -hmm. and do you want to tell how she she kind of taught you how to yeah i mean when we our behavioralist basically like is like a lifesaver but she's taught me to you know Allie is obviously nonverbal. i mean you see with the eye covering and stuff like that so when she does act out or so if we're in target let's say it's it's i try to minimize my verbal I try to get her out as fast as possible. I mean, just like we were talking about, we're, I'm thinking like for myself, but I, when I'm with Allie at all times, I'm thinking for her, like, how is she feeling? How is, how is this going to make her react? Is, is she, is, are these two, are these people too close to her? Yeah, what's the or, smells? Is right. it, you know, are there so kids you're constantly, Yeah, you're constantly right. thinking for her as well as yourself because you're in your own mind, but. I mean, I'm her aide and she, she has her own sense of independence, but it's also like, I, I have to get her out of there if she's feeling uncomfortable, if she's overstimulated or something like that. So that's really where my job comes into play and where you gotta, you gotta help her out and, and be that aid for her and, and give her that assistance. Yeah. yeah. And the world becomes, you know, really overwhelming. Yeah. And, but at the same time, the art, you know, every place that we go in the world is it becomes a teaching environment mm -hmm. yeah. and so when you're in a target and if there isn't loud noises and there isn't um you know a weird smell or there's coffee brewing or there isn't a baby screaming one aisle over once you've kind of done that inventory it could be a task avoidance type of thing mm -hmm. and you have to really you have to really um evaluate you know is it too much for me, the caregiver, the mother, the father, the coach, to handle this situation right now? And do I abandon the cart, which is, you know, sort right. of leave it, leave it there. And Al, you don't get your Play-Doh or you don't get your, your chips or your Snapple or whatever you've chosen sort right. of possibly for the reward. Do I abandon the cart and let's get, get out of here? And don't look back. <laughs> we could try again. And we we encountered that. We've encountered that. Do we try again? We try again. And also we came up with a third um, process, which we use now, is that we do curbside. So we're still, she's still going to have success. Okay, so Target didn't work out. We weren't able to get, you know, the fourth five things on our list because Al was upset and this is what happened. And now we're going to do curbside and we can go home and take a break, but we're going to go back. Yeah, um, that's awesome. Stuff because we, we still have things we need to get done. Yeah. Life can right. And you know, it, it, things still have to be bought. The food needs to be cooked if we're going to make that. And you've still got, you know, obligation on your schedule at four o'clock, you know, to cook pasta if that's what you're going to eat. So we need to go get it. And so it was a really good teaching mechanism. It is still a really good teaching mechanism. Mm -hmm. I mean, who'd ever thought, you know, drive up and go if that was that way back 23 years ago. Right. 
but you know, as different, it's nice to have op. It's nice to have options so to give her success and to make her feel still accomplished. Like still, yeah, still like her day has been full and she's accomplishing things because, you know, as an adult going into the real world now, leaving her cushion, you know, place of her school that she was with for so long where she had the supports of so many people and the applause of so many people all the time. You would know that coming from being a special ed teacher, you know, just walking in the hallway, people are clapping for you, you know? And, yeah, exactly. And, you know, Some days. How, yeah. yeah. How you're dressed and, and you know, um, how cute you look or when you come back from vacation or or just being, obviously, just being you, people are clapping. And so you right. graduate from this and you go out into the world and it's it's kind of depressing because no one's, cla- as we all know, no one's clapping for me when I'm at my stop and shop. Uh, you know, right. No one really cares. <laughs> right. And, you know, there's a little bit of fanfare too. And that's part of Allie that she loves she does like to garner that attention and her beauty and her personality do give off to that. So like when people see her, they notice her beauty and then they, they look twice and they notice that something's wrong with her, you know, not wrong with her for that, yeah. for us, but for them, it's like, wait, she's, she's different. Right. And, um, but we need to teach her that in the real world that there's just so many societal demands and, mm-hmm. It's, you know, as much as we want to say, you don't have to do that. There are certain things that we just have to do to sort of get by, to get out of line and get, get to the next stage of our day. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Fran's given us a couple com- comments here. So I wanted to show this one was when we were talking about, you know, when you were in Target, having that yeah. de- strong sense of self self and confidence in doing what you know and how it works. And then this one, I use a choose your battle mentality. Assess mm-hmm. not only her kiddos, but her own yeah. mental and physical resources available. Absolutely. Yeah, and, I mean, those were good points. Yeah. And yeah. and Emily, I wanted to, to reply to something that you had mentioned earlier of um, using fewer words is so important because when someone is overwhelmed, and it doesn't matter if it's, you know, somebody with autism or just somebody in an, an emergency situation or Um, a training that I've done is called crisis prevention. And so anytime somebody is having a, just a crisis of whatever it is, whether it's anxiety or, or autism or whatever is the fewer words you can use, which I'm doing a really poor example of that right now, (laughs) (laughs) but giving short, simple directions, let's go. What do you need? And then in my experience with a lot of my students, and, and I don't know if this is that way with Allie, but giving a slight bit of time to process that too, you know, and not just, let's go, what do you need? That was more overwhelming for a lot of my students. Um, so I'm thinking based on what you've said that that's probably similar for Allie as well, that she needs a tiny bit of process time before those questions or those directions. Definitely. I mean, my, my favorite thing to say is take a breath and she will like physically exhale and she'll take a breath. And then, you know, I usually know she'll give me like a look or, you know, like a, like she stretches out her hand to get a hand scratch. And then I know, okay, I can now speak. And, but it's like, you have to read Allie. I mean, the, you can't just get someone off the street and be like, you need to watch this girl. Like you can't do it. You gotta, I mean, we are creating an Allie manual for anyone that comes and and has to uh, you know be with her every day like I am so it's like you have everyone's different whether they have autism or not but even even people with autism they're completely different than the next one so it's reading her reading her cues and that's where like thinking of her comes into play just as much as I think of myself yeah and you had a good point too Shelly about the confidence or or Fran actually did with the comment on um, the confidence level because you know, that was something that we really had to exercise in our own selves, my husband, myself, and my son, Emily, anybody who works with Allie in the, in the confidence arena in when you're out in the, when you're out in the world and, and how you react and how you react to people and, um, and how you, how it makes you feel when people are 
you know, looking at you. We had someone on the beach last week come up to us. My husband and I had bought this like new cabana thing and we were trying to put it together and we were failing at it. And <laughs> this woman came up out of nowhere, like out of nowhere and was like, aren't these things a pain? You know, let me, I just bought one. Let me show you how it works. And then she looked down at Allie and she's like, um, she likes the headphones, huh? And I said, yeah, she does. And she says, how do you do it? She says, how do you do it with people? Um, just, they have so much to say, you know, about what's wrong or when they look at you, if she makes a noise and how do you do it? And I said, you know, sometimes we do it really well. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, our emotions get the best of us. Right. And, um, she ended up having a nephew with autism. So she, you know, ended up telling the story, but how gracious was she to kind of come over and help us? She knew Allie wasn't going to get up and try to help us with the umbrella. But, right. um, you know, my son had really difficult time growing up um, in the grocery store or in the airport. Um, birthday parties where we had to leave, you know, suddenly where he would end up staying. I mean, it's like, where's everybody going? Right. I'm here now. You know, my aunt's giving me a ride home. <laughs> my, you know, my parents are, you know, going back and forth. You know, mom's gone now. You know, John and I were always good about switching off. But, you know, it takes a toll on the family. And then it takes a toll on sibling to try to maneuver and really um, grapple with what's happening in their family and to also not have anger at why people are, you know, looking at them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, that when you were telling the story about the woman, I have tears in my eyes because it yeah. was just, I mean, a kind, such a kind gesture and a no yeah. judgment gesture. And yeah, I mean, no, nothing. And that, I, I've probably, I've had some really good experiences that way, you know, but I would say it's like every, you know, more so maybe more often now, but it's like every couple years <laughs> that something yeah. like that would happen. It's not oh. like it, it really happens all the time, but now I'm getting more like, well, self check up, check out is perfect for us. So we can just kind of move on our way. Right. But back in the days where the lines were long and my kids were eating everything in the grocery cart <laughs> just to get out. Yeah, and we're not the only family that it was eating everything, you know, right. but, um, you know, you just were waiting for that person to say, go ahead, like, just go ahead. Like, not that they have all day, but, you know, let me help you out. Or what do you need? Yeah. Right. Or how can yeah. I, you know, do you need help? And if you do get a stronger sense of self and confidence, and then the people who hang out with you do, they start to get it too. And then yeah. you notice when your girlfriends are with you, like, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, and then everybody's kind of getting a little bit strong. Yeah. People, you know, I can't believe people. And then they're starting to see it because they don't have this, this, you know, child that they're, um, you know, taking on a chariot, you know, I am through this yeah. world in the world, yeah. in the, in the world that we live in my family and taking her on this beautiful ride that we're so privileged to be her parents and to share her. We, we are, priv we want to take her on this beautiful golden ride for as long as we can and show her, you know, the best of people and she can show people the best of ourselves. And I, that is really our goal in her adult life. And not everything will come in the next three weeks, <laughs> right? you know, like, um, oh, you're going to graduate college and you get a job and you, you know, that doesn't right. even happen with the regular kids. No. <laughs> and so, um, I kind of like love that because you and I both know, you know, the older you get, you know, people look for their next <clears throat> chapter, people look for the next thing to do. Well, it reminds us, it reminds everyone that everyone can have the next chapter everyone has next you know can have the next year to try out new things and and to be better or to take a chance or to take a risk yeah yeah and um 
I forget which one of you said it a little bit ago, but um, I think it was Emily, but I know it applies to both of you is the, the knowing alley. You kind of hinted at that with your talking about your girlfriends. And um, I, I have a book out, Those Who Can't Teach. And um, in there, I had a couple of families say the same thing, that that when their child was struggling in school, it was because the the teachers or if they weren't known by medical staff, because those people didn't know their child. But when they found a, an environment where the people took the time to know mm -hmm. their child and learn their child, mm -hmm. their child flourished. And so what, I think it was Emily said that about you're making an alley manual. Um, yeah. And that's perfect because what exactly what you said, what you're going to do with Allie and for Allie is not the same as you would do for each other or for me. Right. So, you know, having that information and then also that gives that confidence that you talked about with your girlfriends or, you know, I, I, I know too, from the stories in my book that so many families say they don't have people mm. that will stay with their child no matter how old their child is, whether they're an infant or an adult or somewhere in between. And it's so often because people don't have that confidence. And sometimes it's that the parent doesn't have the trust to be able to step away mm -hmm. and let someone else do that. And, and I can only imagine the trust that is required. And oh, it's so- a, it's 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 an enormous amount of trust and um and it's also empowering you know that person who you've you know kind of gained you know in your in your circle as a champion um mm -hmm. i'm lucky to have emily and i have one other girl um and her name is carrie who's been with ally for like 10 years and then we have a couple um part-timers who kind of come in and go and she's lucky to have some really beautiful cousins um who and aunts and uncles who really um given any any um emergency or um time where they need to spend time with her you know can 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 do that for her um but it's it's a teaching it's not um it doesn't just come as you know oh, here's the bottle and here's the diaper. right <laughs> Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and I, I think that that is something that we need to do better at as a society is being okay with learning something new, right. you know, um, and, and wanting to, you know, so often I'll yeah. hear people say, oh, just call me if you need something. Mm -hmm. Well, That's I can't just call you if I need something like if I'm in your mm -hmm. shoes, because you there's things you have to know before I can call you when I need that. Yeah. And you're constantly just kind of like, you have to sort of up level yourself. And that's where my yoga practice has always kind of come into cue for me, whether it's with breath work or meditation or just like three simple minutes of just being able to just kind of take a quick look, scan of the situation and then give myself a minute just for my nervous system to sort of recalibrate. Um, because I remind Emily and anybody who works with Allie, you know, you are a person, uh, mm -hmm. bre living, breathing person as well. And, yeah. you know, it goes back to that old thing, you know, put the oxygen on before you give it to the child. But um, in caregiving, it's, you know, whether you're a new caregiver or you've been doing it for many, many years, um, you know, I hate to use that word, but, you know, it's like whether you're a coach or caregiver or however you want to classify it, there is a lot of um, care that you need to take and, well, tenderness that you have to take for your body, for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, you have to drive slow. You have to pay attention. You have to um, drink water. You have to <laughs> eat you have to sit, you have to go home and, you know, have whatever gives, whatever fuels you and feeds you. And, um, it's, it's, it's a very balanced lifestyle, but can easily in, in moments become completely unbalanced. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And this was Fran's comment from earlier, but it, it fit in perfectly just now as well, that you have to allow yourself to be real too. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then she also commented when we were talking about the next chapter, different mm-hmm. seasons in this journey of yeah, life. And, that, and that's true. Um, Fran is, I don't know if you're aware of it, but I also have another web show that I do called Friday with Fran. And this is the Fran from there. So, um, she has a lot of experience too with, um, she has two adult children as well, um, who both have special needs. Her daughter has autism and her son has down syndrome. So, um, she's got a lot of experience and and has walked this journey uh, that you are walking on as well. Um, so you mentioned, I want to talk about this a little bit, is your yoga practice. So mm-hmm. um, how has that really helped both you and Allie and your your family um, in living with someone with yeah. autism? I think, it, you know, the practice is really what, where Mother Asana was born. Um, so I think... I came to yoga, you know, just sort of unexpectedly, um, you know, just, it was quite, um, chaotic when my kids are 22 months apart. So, um, always been a seeker since I was a young girl, but, you know, never really sat in a yoga mat until, you know, Allie was about three years old when my son, Johnny was about one, was one. And I was like, I just probably need to go somewhere where it's just, no, nothing's moving. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, um, and in fact, when I went to yoga and I was like, well, we have to move now, you know, like I'm good <laughs> without, with just sitting here, this is good. So, um, it just gave me a place where I could go, you know, sort of like when you read and you, you read books and it takes you to so many places. Yeah. This was a journey that just, this was part of my um, strategy just to check in with myself and my, my body and not my, you know, definitely my physical body, but, um, but, you know, just to make sure that I was breathing and living and um, looking after myself, even though I have lovely people and family in my life to look after me, I, I learned that, you know, I have to look after myself. And so I started the practice and, you know, covered many aspects of uh, asana, which is of mother asana. So asana means to sit with presence and purpose. Okay. And um, asana is any given pose in yoga. Um, There's a variety of asana. And one of the asanas is sukhasana, which is just sitting. And so there's been so many times, Jelly, where I, or, you know, and Emily could, could attest to this too, my husband, um, my family, where you're just sitting with a sen- sense of um, purpose and stillness, um, but you're still, you're still getting stuff done, even right. though it feels like you're doing nothing. Right. Um, I've been brought to the side street of Main Street USA and Disney World, sitting in asana with Allie, you know, while an Easter parade is going on, because I just need to sit with her with presence to be present and with purpose. That That is so awesome. What we're going to do. Yeah. And I had to teach that myself to myself. I'm sure that. Yeah. So I, and, and I use it. That's, you know, how I use it in my family and, you know, use it to, for connection. And um, it, it's, a, it's my strategy, you know, it's not, you know, it doesn't have to be anybody else's strategy. Um, it's just suggestions and um, how to connect with yourself um, before you connect with others or how to connect with others while connecting with yourself and somehow have that reciprocity that gives you that sort of dopamine hit that right ah all's good all is well you know yeah. because that's what happens if you and I were to have this conversation tomorrow it wouldn't be the same one as it is right, right now right and every time you sit down to have a cup of coffee with a friend you might leave and say that was really nice time. I had a great talk with you today, but tomorrow you could say, geez, Gina, 
she just wasn't on, you know, she wasn't the same as she was yesterday, <laughs> you know, right. You, you know, we can't be, cause we can't recreate those situations, which is often hard for Allie. Um, you know, that every time we sit at the kitchen table, it's not always going to be, you know, a little round of candy land or, you know, go over the schedule or we eat ice cream, you know, it's like, we're back at the table again. We're going to connect, but it's different this time. And that, that, you know, comes from that generalization, which is so hard. So yeah. these are fleeting moments and we just sit with the presence, the purpose, the moment is there. It's live, as you said, in the beginning of this broadcast, and then it's over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's like her art. It's like, she drew it. She said it, she sang it. It's done. It's like right. out. And, you know, the mother Asana was sort of like, I better start capture, capturing these moments mm-hmm. and these nuggets of gold that she's offering and these little snippets and how to encapsulate them in my, with her, her, um, her nuggets encapsulated with my musings on our family life. Yeah. And while you've talked about it, you're, you've talked about the yoga and the mother asana, yeah. and you've talked about her artwork. So I'm going to bring up her web, your website now. Do you want to go get her? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think Emma's and... going to try to go uh, get. Okay, perfect. And I've, we've got a couple more um, comments here from Fran. So she said, talk, she was talking about being intentional and in the moment. Yeah. And I, I think that pretty much sums up yoga right there, doesn't it? And those two stuff. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, um, you know, the practice evolves over time and our, our, you know, our bodies change, our, our lifestyle changes. And we, we really, um, have to, you know, you kind of enter that next phase, you enter that next, like, well, what's my practice going to look like now? And right. what's my, you know, where my practice was, you know, longer, I was, the kids were in school, I was able to get these hour and a half classes in I did you know teacher trainings I did you know road trips with my friends and you know now I'm just busier than ever doing this adulting life thing with her and I'm like where am I practicing today and it's you know it's yeah while I'm making tea or while I'm making dinner and you know it, it's all asana yeah and Fran and I often talk on our Fridays with Fran about the mental health side of the caregiver and, you know, how important it is um, to take care of yourself and to be in the moment and be present during something that is happening. Because as you said, you'll never get that moment back. Yeah. I mean, I, I, um, wearing pink, kind of a shout out, um, to breast cancer survivors as I am one. And I had that moment where, you know, I got the call that I had cancer and my first reaction, my first words to my girlfriend who I was on the phone with was, I can't die. I can't die. Right. And I think that it's not true because we all will die, you know? Well, yeah. You know, we, 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 we we all are going to die. And so it's like, I had to really look at that and say, like, this is interesting, you know, because you never want to think of a world without you in it or me in it to care for Allie, you know, but it it doesn't hinder in the back of my mind as fear, but it's just the logical um, place that someday Allie will be, you know, on this earth perhaps without us. Yeah. And so, um, you know, again, back to Fran, I mean, you have to be really real about things and it's really hard to look at real things. It's really hard to look at real things. It's really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, um, she said balance, finding that time, even if it is brief to reboot and how important that is. Yep. So I take it since Emily is back without Allie, yeah, that Allie not was not up to seeing me on the screen again. <laughs> Which is perfectly fine and understandable. We can Still- show a picture of her here on the website. But yeah, this is the um, homepage of our website with just a, you know, a quick smattering of um, some of the art that she does. 
And this is actually the mutual friend, and, <clears throat> excuse me, and how we have met because she has some of her items at the One for All gift shop. Um, yep. which Teresa is has the um, mug, the shine mug that is at the shop now. Um, we have some other things on our website. Um, we do things in small batches. And mm -hmm. again, like Allie, they're sort of fleeting. <laughs> right. So whatever, whatever comes up, comes up and sells out. And then we sort of do another batch of something. And our, right. our customers quite, uh, they like that. They like that. Yeah, it. I mean, it truly is a one of a kind original. Then at that point, because yeah. she, she may not make another one like that. <laughs> she usually doesn't. She usually doesn't, and um, you know, she's an artist, so she can go dormant as well. <laughs> right. Um, and um, we are we are writing a book together. So um, she's been she's been asked, you know, to create on demand to some degree. And yeah. um, that's been interesting, but she's so creative. She's so fast. If you've mm. ever just seen a watercolor uh, artist, just paint really quickly and just do it. She, she's, she's just got that ta among her many talents, one of which she is an artist and I'm an art lover and, you know, I'd like to say creative myself. And so it, it's just in my, it's just right up my alley to just, always be creating and then letting it go and creating and letting it go. And, yeah, you know, cause it's like, I just, you know, just kind of put it out there and then go on to the next thing. I just want to share it with the world. Yeah. That's so awesome. So yeah, there's a couple of places then where people can buy things that are made by Allie so they can go to your website or they can, um, if they're in the, um, Long Island area, I'm trying to think North, North Fork, yeah, she's in, um, um, yes, right in, right on the North Fork. And she actually has an online shop now. Yeah, yeah, so I, I, she just released that, online. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. so a, that's very yeah, exciting. Yeah, Teresa's a very big supporter of um, many, many adults with disabilities mm -hmm. and um, and with Allie as well and, and her art. And so we were, we're just thrilled to be there, yeah. And then we did this mug like with a local um, potter from Maine. And so we just are, you know, over time through the seasons, um, curating new things and, uh -huh. and, you know, buying small batches and, and, and then putting them out there. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, and I love that so much that there aren't those limits, you know, um, maybe she, isn't working at a factory or, you know, at a large corporation, but she's, she's an entrepreneur. She is creating beautiful things mm -hmm. and helping bring light yeah. to and our bring, world. Bring, you know, she brings the shine right in and it's yeah. sort of like the, the, well, my girlfriend said, you know, when I hold this mug, it's like, I'm, you know, I'm holding space for, you know, the person who I bought it from or the person I'm sending out, you know, just kind of like a hug. And right. it's, um, it's just joyful. It's, it's, it's just to feel good. Again, it's like that, that little hit. Yeah. That I can give you, which you were so privileged to kind of have her jump on. You could get that hit yeah. right away from her smile and, um, you know, that's, that's what I want. That's what I want for people. I want people to feel that way. I think everyone should have that hit in their day. You know, Absolutely. At <laughs> least once a day, like, if not 10 or 20 yeah, times a day. <laughs> once a day, you know, and I think, um, you know, however you can offer it up, whatever you do, you know, if you can offer that up and share it, then, then go ahead and do so. And these, you know, this population, if you want to call it that, just has so much to teach the world. Yeah. 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 Which is the exact reason for the title of, of my book. Yeah. Um, and it, it just fits. Because my experiences as a special education teacher, I have said this for years, and I'm, I still feel as though I am learning every week 
when I do one of these episodes with another person and I learn about different things. And as a teacher, of course, that is always what I think we should be doing is learning <laughs> constantly and never stopping. Um, but I, there were just so many things and they, they weren't necessarily, you know, the things that you typically think about learning in a school, but that's okay. That's, yeah. it's still part of life. It's still being human. And, you know, I mean, I, I learned about unconditional, true unconditional love mm. from many of the families that I worked with over the years that they gave to me, not just that they gave to each other. And, you know, being compassionate and having such an, some of my students that I worked with, I saw a work ethic in them that I didn't see in your typical person. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, there's at the end of every one of my chapters is, you know, this is what I learned from, from yeah. being I know, blessed. I, saw, I love that part of your book. I love that because it, you know, it's just that truth telling space where, like you said, I mean, Al's teaching, you know, my, my son is teaching me something new every day, you know, Right. Um, and, and, and so is Allie. And, but Allie will always take me out to the beaten path, <laughs> to the side door, to the, 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 you know, the dirt road that leads you to, you don't even know where, and you know, you've got cuts and bruises all over you and you're like, how could this actually be good? <laughs> and then you're like, actually it could be. You know, right. I, I actually could. And so perspective is always there. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, I love being able to, you know, give the generation like Emily and Carrie and other people who care for Allie um, the opportunity to kind of develop their own style and take on that dirt road on their own um, when they find themselves there. And um you know, it's like, talk about team building. <laughs> you know? Right. It's like, yes. It's constantly like you're in that team building sort of um, environment where you're like, what would you do if you were stranded in Target, you know, <laughs> screaming and everyone's like, what's going on? And no one's coming to help you. And no you've got to get her me. out of the store, but she's on the ground. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and that's just, you know, using target as an example, but an airplane, a train, a concert, you know, which we don't go to, but we're also kind of taking into play, like what, what does Allie like to do? I mean, right. and I think Fran would definitely speak up to this as, you know, there's things Gina wants to do. There's things, things my husband wants to do. There's things we want to do together. And there's things Allie wants to do, but necessarily you, you find that it's not all that everybody wants to do the same thing. Well, yeah, exactly. And, and so if we have certain situations where we have to bring Allie, we're really starting to rethink them, you know, is what's important for her. Let's have her have a positive experience. Let's try to like, let this just be something that she felt like good at rather than overwhelmed, you know, whether it be a family party or an event or, or something, um, even today, you know, I mean, she, she did come up here, you know, yeah. it, it, you know, and, and wanted to share her herself, but, um, now she doesn't want to come up here. And so it's, it's like, okay, taking no for an answer. Right. And not pushing, and there's a certain level of really pushing and letting the day, you know, just be as it was. Again, another fleeting moment. And there's yeah. always that opportunity to begin again, which goes back to my yoga practice. And right. you're sitting in Sukhasana, which is your seated pose, wherever you're sitting, and you take a breath because you can begin again. Yeah. And this is what um, Fran just posted, respecting Allie. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, it is so important because we do, we tend to think that our way is the right way or that our, our version of happiness is the only version of happiness. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm learning um, that 
I can change my expectations. I'm not necessarily lowering my expectations. I'm changing them. And I can find just as a wonderful experience, no matter which expectation I chose to go with, you know, so whether it's, and, and it's, yeah, because you've got people around you who have adult children who are coming and going and you're coming and going. And we certainly um, have a beautiful life. We're coming and going too, but we're all, we're coming and going differently. Right. And, um, you know, there's places I'll go without Allie and be with my husband and, or be with whoever I'm with and she won't be there. And, um, it's okay. It's, it's, it's a good feeling to know, but to really sort of embrace the fact that and not feeling bad about everybody coming and going and having this freedom from their children as they're grown and then moving into these stages of life. You know, it, it looks different here in this house, but that doesn't mean it's not just as beautiful. Exactly. Absolutely. And abundant. It's, yeah. it's got corners and hard turns and trick doors <laughs> <laughs> unsteady floors but it it can it, there is flow and yeah. you, you know that there's there has to be trust there has to be trust absolutely well gina and emily we just have a couple of minutes i've so enjoyed this conversation with the both of you i could continue to talk to you for many more hours um but i do try to hold this to within an hour yeah. so before we we wrap up is there any last words anything that you definitely wanted to say today that you haven't had a chance to say you know i just think that um to your viewers you know just keep on um, opening your heart to um, this population. Um, you know, autism is out there working. That, you know, they are, they are participants in society. Um, they're beautiful um, people with such huge hearts and so much to offer in, in giving out to the world. Um, so when you're out there and you, you see a family um, struggling in line or, um, you know, going through something in the airport, you know, maybe, maybe take a pause. Um, and then also check us out at motherasana.com. And we've got a book coming out next year, which we're really excited about. Allie will be the Yay, illustrator. Thanks. So um, there'll be a lot of cool art. It's a family journal, so it's going to offer a lot of connection. And we'd love to come back and talk with you about that. Yeah, yeah. that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah, I would love that. Emily, so, any last parting words? I would have said the same thing. I mean, I think just encouraging people to be open to learning about anyone with a disability. And yeah, if you're if you see someone, I mean, take a take a minute for yourself. Or if someone is struggling, you know, lend a helping hand because it's never going to be refused. I mean, I would never be unhappy with someone saying, do you need a hand or something like that? So being open to learning and, and helping is the biggest thing as us working with Allie yeah. every day. Awesome. Absolutely. Beautiful. Well, thank you, well, again, Shelley. This is great. Yeah. It's been wonderful. Yeah. I'm very happy to have you on. And I'm glad that I got to meet Allie before this started. I, I'm so sad for my viewers that they don't get to see her beautiful face and smile and meet her. But um, maybe maybe the next time, maybe when we come back maybe on and talk time. about the yeah. book. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining. Thanks, Next Shelley. week, I will have Seth Perler on. He's a person who talks about executive functioning. Um, and that is such a, a crucial layer of skills that often gets overlooked. So make sure to join me next Tuesday at one o'clock and Friday with Fran. I definitely have to promote that oh, today yeah, since I she's with me <laughs> at Friday at one o'clock. So thanks everyone. Bye-bye.